Ash Wednesday, officially known as the Day of Ashes, is a day of repentance when Christians confess their sins and profess their devotion to God. The ashes symbolize both death and repentance. During this period, Christians show repentance and mourning for their sins because they believe Christ died for them. Ash Wednesday is a Christian holy day of prayer and fasting. It is preceded by Truth Tuesday and falls on the first day of Lent, the six weeks of penitence before Easter. It is also a liturgical event for Christians. On Ash Wednesday, we impose ashes and the significance of the ashes is repentance and mortality. In other words, the imposition of ashes is a reminder to you and to me that we are mortal. That means we are going to die. Uh, every Christian, every unbeliever will die. And so the ashes tell us and remind us that indeed we will die. Uh, that is why during the imposition of ashes, one of the things that the priest will say is, remember that thou art dust and unto dust thou shalt return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. In other words, you will die and decompose and become dust and ashes again. Ash Wednesday is the first day of Lent, marking the beginning of the Lenten season in the church year calendar. It actually derives its name from the repentance ashes which the priest imposes on the foreheads of the parishioners and saying the words repent and believe the gospel which is actually taken from the gospel according to saint mark chapter 1 verse 15 or the popular dictum remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return taken from genesis chapter 3 verse 19. traditionally ashes used on Ash Wednesday, are gathered up after pans from the previous year's pan Sunday, are burned. They are then blessed before being used in the ceremony. Christians generally wear the ashes, which symbolize penance, mourning, and mortality, to publicly express their faith and penance. The ashes that are imposed on, on their foreheads represent repentance. Uh, it is an invitation to us, recognizing the fact that we are human and therefore mortal, our mortality, we're going to die because of sin. It is necessary for us to repent of our sin. Turn away from our sins, the sense of pride, the sense of selfishness and greed and sexual immorality, uh, the sense of gossip and lies and false witness, you know, all kinds of sins, a uh, sense of political partisanship, and corruption, uh, the sense of maltreating people and discriminating against them, uh, the sense of tribalism, and all kinds of uh, evil, you know, embezzlement and materialism. So th there are so many things that are wrong in our lives, even in the lives of Christians and Christian leaders. So the ash is a reminder to us that we need to repent of our sin and also a reminder that we are mortal, that is, we are going to die. And if we die without repenting of our sins and believing in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, uh, we are going to perish uh, eternally. It is important to remind ourselves of this because too often we we'll, we'll pretend that we're going to live forever. You know, uh, the humanists uh, tell us uh, the world belongs to us and if we do this, if we do that, we're going to be healthy, you know, we're going to be happy and of course, uh, some preachers reinforce uh, that sort of false understanding of reality. The reality that the Christian faith must proclaim to Christians and to the world is that we are human and because we are human, we are going to die. And the reason why we really die is because the wages of sin is death. Uh, so man sinned in Adam and all of us will surely die. And as the Bible says, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, judgment, judgment on our sins. 
The significance of Ash Wednesday is actually taken from the ash itself, the repentance ash, which uh, is imposed on the foreheads of the parishioners. The ash represents two things. One, it represents death and it represents repentance. Death because according to Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, man was made from dust by God. So ash is also equivalent to dust. And in Genesis chapter 3 verse 19, God says, From dust you came, and to dust you shall return. So when man dies, the decomposing corpse eventually turns to dust. And if you attend an Anglican funeral during the interment, you will hear the priest say, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, earth to earth. And that tells us that we are nothing but dust. So during Lent, we remember that no matter how highly placed or lowly placed, no matter how rich or poor, gorgeously dressed or shabbily dressed, educated or illiterate, we came into this world with nothing and we are going back without anything. We are nothing but dust and it calls for humility. It also signifies repentance. In the Old Testament times, when people sinned and became sorrowful for their sins, they put on a sackcloth and pour ashes on their heads to show repentance, to show remorse, to show penance or penitence. And it shows brokenness. Like the Bible says that a broken and a contrite spirit, the Lord does not despise. So at length, we, we humble ourselves before God in true repentance and penitence for the salvation of our souls. Ash Wednesday is important because it marks the start of the Lenten period leading up to Easter when Christians believe Jesus was resurrected. During this period, Christians show repentance and mourning for their sins. On Ash Wednesday, Catholics and many other Christians have ashes applied to their foreheads. People generally wear the ashes throughout the day to publicly express their faith and penance. It is not required that a worshipper wear the ashes for the rest of the day, although many Christians choose to do so. However, dining out or doing non-essential shopping are considered not necessary on Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is, is very, very important. Now, unfortunately, uh, these days, uh, you know, a lot of preachers and, and in many places in the Anglican Communion, when they impose the ashes on you, they don't talk about repentance. Uh, they rather talk about mortality. You know, remember that you are dust and of the dust you shall return. Uh, they completely ignore uh, the repentance part of it. And the reason for that ignoring of, of the repentance part of the ashes is because uh, there is an antipathy you know, th there is a sort of an, a spiritual allergic reaction uh, to, to the idea of repentance uh, because repentance makes you feel bad about yourself. You know, repentance makes you uh, feel that uh, you're not as good as you really are. Uh, in fact, uh, I've got bad news for you. Uh, you're not as good as you think you really are. And so uh, we do need to repent. So we need to remind ourselves and remind our congregations that we are mortal, we're going to die and we're going to face God's judgment and if we don't repent, we'll perish eternally. The importance of the Ash Wednesday to Christians is that it focuses the Christian's heart on prayer and repentance. It, it, it leads us to intentional repentance. And um, I would like to say that uh, the importance is beyond religion, the religiosity of it. We can put ashes on our foreheads, but without really understanding the meaning of the cross sign that we have on our foreheads. The cross is all about salvation. Jesus said, if you must follow me, you have to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. So the importance is Repentance is a message of repentance, a message of humility, a message of self-denial, a message of cross-carrying, like today Christians in the Northeast of this country are being persecuted 
Churches are being born, Christians are killed, are slaughtered like, like animals. And the Lord says that we go through all this on account of his name and we have a reward in heaven. So the importance and the message is clear. Repent and believe the gospel. This world is not our home. We came into this world without anything and we're living this world without anything. But if we truly repent and believe the gospel, we have eternal reward in the kingdom of God. Ash Wednesday is one of the most important dates on the Christian calendar because it marks the start of Lent. Lent is a six-week period of fasting or self-sacrifice, prayer, and almsgiving, observed by Christians each year to prepare for the celebration of Easter, when they believe Christ rose from the dead to sit at the right hand of God, the Father. Lent is celebrated over 46 days. It includes 40 days of fasting and six Sundays, on which fasting is not practiced. The 40-day period has a special significance in the Old and New Testaments. For instance, Moses spent 40 days and nights with God on Mount Sinai in preparation to receive the Ten Commandments. Jesus also is depicted as being led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil for 40 days. It is not observed today because the Bible says rent your hearts and not your garments. It's possible for us to get hypocritical about it or become uh, overtly religious. We can tear our garments apart, we can pour ashes on our foreheads without getting truly repented. So it talks about brokenness of heart. If we are truly convicted by the Holy Spirit and we repent of our sins, we don't need to show the physical religious signs of uh, tearing our clothes or pouring ashes on our head. We have to do that inwardly, showing that we have truly repented and it will show in our character that the Lord has influenced by the power of the Holy Spirit through repentance. Lent also reminds us of the fasting of our Lord Jesus Christ in the wilderness which took 40 days and Lent is actually uh, a 40 week days uh, event. 40 days because uh, if you count the number of days from the Ash Wednesday to the, the end of the season you will get 40 days excluding Sundays. So Jesus fasted and it teaches us to fast. In the Anglican communion, we have a tradition of fasting every day of the Lent. It doesn't actually mean that one has to go dry in the fasting. You can do as your body can carry. You can do six to 12, you can do six to five or six to six as you are led and as you can carry. But the most important thing is that it's a period of withdrawal, it's a period of abstinence, it's a period of retreat, it's a period of confession, personal confession and communal confession. And when I talk about retreat, I mean personal devotion and communion with God. So we, we fast at length and I encourage Christians to actually do fast. It's not only food that we deprive ourselves of in Lent. You also deprive yourself of getting addicted to mobile phones, tablets and all those devices, games and stuff, going to uh, watch movies and uh, drinking. And, and anything that has become a habit to you, you deprive yourself of those things so you can concentrate fully on your relationship with God through meditation. The attitude of Christians at a time like this should be that of humility, seeking the face of God. Christians should go into a personal retreat is a time of withdrawal. It's not a time to celebrate religiosity. It's not a time to celebrate worldliness. It's a time to celebrate humility. Remembering the passion of Christ, his sufferings, his sacrifice on the cross, his death, burial and resurrection, and what it means to us. So the attitude should be that of humility. It should be that of seeking God first and putting every other thing behind us. Because the Lord clearly asked a question which we must answer. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? We should think about the eternal destination of our souls in this Lenten season. During Lent, many Christians observed a period of fasting, repentance, 
moderation, self-denial, and spiritual discipline. The purpose of the Lenten period is to set aside time for reflection on Jesus Christ, to consider his suffering and his sacrifice, his life, death, burial, and resurrection. Hence, the need for Christians to lay aside every form of religiosity since in this season. My message to Christians as we observe Ash Wednesday and Lent is for us to avoid getting overt religious about it. It's easy for you to see people all over the place with uh, ash cross on their foreheads and uh, they parade it all over the place showing that, oh, we are Christians, we're celebrating Lent, we're celebrating Ash Wednesday, but without getting to know the true meaning, the real significance and spiritual benefits of it. So let us lay aside the religiosity of it and think of the spiritual gains and benefits of Ash Wednesday. It's all about making peace with Christ. It's all about understanding that we are nothing without Christ. It's all about appreciating the suffering and the sacrifice that Christ made for us on the cross of Calvary. So my message to Christians on this Ash Wednesday and throughout the Lenten season is for us to truly seek God while he may be found. God is waiting for us to come back to him in true repentance. So during this season of Lent, uh, as you celebrate Ash Wednesday, remember that you will die and humble yourself before God, humble yourself before others and repent of your sin and believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord and the blood he shed on the cross will wipe away every sin that you've committed and your life will be transformed. The Lord wants to transform your life. The Lord wants to transform my life and our lives during this season of Lent as we turn to Him in repentance and in humility and let the Holy Spirit change our lives and let the blood of Jesus wash us clean. Ashes have long been associated with sorrow, purification and rebirth, which all play a role in the story of Easter Sunday. There is no mention of Ash Wednesday in the Bible, but there is a tradition of donning ashes as a sign of penitence that predates Jesus. In the Old Testament, Job repents in dust and ashes, and there are other associations of ashes and repentance in Esther, Samuel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. The imposition of ashes is a reminder of our death. It is a symbol of sorrow for our sins. Ash Wednesday, falls on a different day each year because it is dependent on the date of Easter.
Jesus is a sign that from the dust you have been raised, and to dust you shall return. Return to me with all your heart. Let go. Your heart and not your clothes For I am coming
CNN, reaching the world with the undiluted word of God.